Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here, and today I want to share the prophetic meaning and a prophetic word that God has given me for the year 5783 on the Hebraic biblical calendar. And so I want to share what the prophetic word is, but first I'm going to share just a little bit about the biblical calendar so that you have a good understanding. And then I'm going to talk about the 80 and then the three, and then I'm going to give you the prophetic word after I put together the prophetic meaning. So first of all, um, before we get into this word, if you like it, um, please subscribe, thumbs it up, and share this with someone who would be interested and who is looking for more understanding into how, into how God um, uses the prophet exp expressions given in his alphabet, that is the Hebrew alphabet, how he uses those to speak to us prophetically over each year. He crowns the year with his goodness and our paths or the paths that he gives us and puts us on drips with abundance, says his word. And so again, let's get into it. First of all, the Hebrew alphabet is different from our alphabet. Our alphabet has letters that when put together, create a word. And so they have phonic meaning and phonic sound and when you put something together like an a and a t you get at you put those together to create a word but the hebraic biblical alphabet has a every every alphabet or alphabet has a word a phonic sound to make words with it has numeric value phonic value and it has um pictorial value, which means it is an image. There's an image. There's something prophetic. God is a God who gives us the ability to see. So there's a lot that goes into an image. So the same words, or excuse me, letters that in the Hebrew language are used to create words are also numbers, and they also have pictorial meaning. And so it's Three. And so this year is 5783. And so I'm going to describe or define for you the 80 and then the three. So the 80 is the word pay, P E Y. You say it like pay day, pay, but it's spelled P E Y in Hebrew. And it means to speak to decree and to build with your words. It means a word that means mouth and speak and build. So there's so much into that. And I will probably link that video um, here. I'll add the video at this point and um, so that you can watch the depth of that. But it, we are in a building season where God is saying that you're gonna decree and you're gonna declare and that you need to speak forth what is and watch your words because life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the thing about the the prophetic meaning of each year, um, many of these promises God has already spoken to us as Christians and they're already biblical principles, but there's a special anointing or a window of time. That's the thing about a prophetic season or a year, times and seasons of God. There's a prophetic window that you go in and that there is a word spoken over that. Just like any prophecy, there's a word over the year that when you tap into it, you reap the harvest and the blessings of what God has spoken and declared. That doesn't mean that you can't reap them, reap them in other seasons because as we know, Jesus can make a beginning of year to you. He can change something. He can do a miracle anytime, but this is what he has declared over this season of time, this kairos, our opportune or set amount of time within our chronos, which is time moving forward in a linear fashion. And then kairos moments or seasons are a point Appointed times, set times, due seasons, appointed uh, times. So it can be a quick window or a, a larger window of divine appointed times where God has spoken something or he has something planned that he wants to do to further your part in his plan, to further your purpose in his overall plan, because we are part of a big plan. So that being said, then we have, so that's the decade that we're in. And then we have the three. We have uh, the three that we are entering into, which is um, 
the three that we are entering into. Well, so let me back up. So it was 80, which, which means to say, to say is the 80. And then, which is pay. And then bet, B-E-T, was the season of building. And God has done some restoring, some rebuilding, and some reestablishing in the year that we are in, the bet to, which means house and to build. So he took the pay, which is to say, and said, by your words, you shall establish, by your words, you shall build. I will restore you. I will rebuild you. I will bring you into a season of rest. And so those are the things that God has done. Um, and let me know in the comments if you have experienced in this past year a season of rebuilding, of being restored, of reconciliation, um, even if it didn't look like you thought it was, a season of rest where he has done those things in your life. I know that he has done that for me, of reestablishing you in a different way, um, of rebuilding foundations and the broken places in your life to prepare you for what he's about to bring you into. Now, let me go into the three. The three is the word gimel, and there's a couple of meanings, but I'm going to tell you the one that stood out to me the most because there is the, it's three and it's, it looks like a camel. Uh, it can be, when you look at the picto, pictograph, it can look like a camel, a man riding on top of the camel when you see the crown at the top, or it can look like a person walking for a man walking forward um, into a new season, or it can look like a three-legged stool. And I'll put a picture of that um, in the video as well. And so that being said, it means to give. A camel comes giving, loaning good things for your benefit. Um, it means kindness toward other. The actual word means kindness towards others for the benefit of others, to do acts of kindness, to bless others. Um, and so that they can receive and to receive the kindness of the Lord. It also has a meaning that means redeemer. Our redeemer gave his life. He did charity and acts of kindness toward us for our benefit. And so it has that meaning in it. But there's also a sense of when you don't receive the kindness of the salvation of the Lord, that on the flip side of that is the judgment that the Lord says that those who do not receive his love, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave that so whomever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. But if you don't receive the, the, the son, then you are judged already. And so there's that part of it as well. And then there is the stability. And this is the part that the Lord ignited with fire and passion in my spirit. Um, and I think this is where I want to focus. This is where I want to focus. Stability. So it's three. And it's not just because it's the 5783, but it's because the pictograph, there are pictographs in the alphabet that will not look anything like the letter or the number that we are in. So I don't want you to be focused on that because some people will prophesy into something and not having um, studied the Hebrew portion of it. And the prophecy may be right, but it's not just because it's the year three. It is because the prophetic expression that has, God has already placed in this um, season, right? Over this season. And so the three... The, the, when we look at the pictograph and we see those three legs that stick down, um, it is stability. And this is where the word st stability comes from. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There are three. So that's, that's three. So God brings stability. He brings his strength in three. John one, or one John chapter five, seven through eight says, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are one. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, though one may be overpowered by another, 
two can withstand him and a threefold cord is not easily broken. So when you establish yourself with the Holy Spirit and it only takes one more, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name. So two plus him equals power, equals stability. There I am in the midst of you. So he shows up in power in three and brings stability. So let me go on to this. So I believe that it has been, now I'm going to prophesy. So this is the, I've given you the meaning of pay, explain the Hebraic alphabet, the meaning of pay and the meaning of gemel and what I want to focus on. So now I want to prophesy into what I believe God is saying over us for this year. And so we have come into a time where I don't know about you guys, but there has been sifting in my life. And at the beginning of the new year, last year, the Lord, and I wrote it in my journal, he spoke to me and he said some things and he said, I'm going to reestablish you. This is a season of rest so I can rebuild you. I have plans for you, but it's not according to what you can do, not according to your best plan or the plans of others. It is a plan and a blueprint that has been in heaven. And, but you will have to rest. This is a time of purging. Um, the idols from your old season, they cannot go into the new season with you. I will rebuild your ministry, your ministry call, your reputation, because when you were going through this season of sifting, many have gone through a season of sifting, then, um, the enemy straight sought to destroy you through the inconsistency because of the sifting that you were going through because the the things that were going on in your life the attacks and all the different things that he seeks to discredit us and to discredit our call but god said i will rebuild you i will bring you in a time of rest i will bring you into a time of rest and i will rebuild you and restore you so that you can go forth in power and in this season that which worked in the old season will not work you will have stability in this season and so we're going into us now that was at the beginning of last year or 2022 um which we're going into the new Hebraic year. So that was January 7th, 2022. So it was past the Hebraic year and at the beginning of the Gregorian year that we use here in America. And so here we are. And he brought that word back to mind, although I've read it throughout the year. But when I began to study and listen for the voice of the Lord to share what he is speaking, I heard him bring that word back to me and he said it's a time of stability and then last night i heard him say it is the time of new beginnings you have circled this mountain long enough many have gone around and around in the same mountain you ended up in the wilderness because you didn't enter into your promised land when god first presented it to you and so here you have been sitting and waiting and god is saying it is a new beginning for you it is a new season for you and he is bringing you into a place where in this season, though there may war be wars in the midst of unstable times and an unstable world, that he is going to put stability in you and he's going to bring you into your new season and into your new land. And these are the scriptures that I have for you concerning that. First of all, in uh, Peter, what is it? Uh, Matthew, I believe it was, uh, the Lord said to Peter, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has does ask for you and that he may sift you but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren but he said to him lord lord i'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death then he said i tell you peter the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times that you know me and that did happen. And God did restore Peter. But Peter was the one with the zeal. He had an anointing on his life. He had a call on his life. He was zealous for God. But he was also up and down in his emotions uh, and his moods and his feelings. One minute he was cutting off the sword, the ear of the of the um, soldier and, the, and Jesus having to put it back on. And the next minute he was denying that he even knew Jesus. One minute he was saying, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus was saying, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And the next minute, Jesus was having to rebuke him because he was God. And he was telling Peter what 
would happen and G and Peter was disagreeing with him because he was in his flesh and um although he meant well he was in his flesh and um, and Jesus had to say get behind me Satan to Peter speaking to the enemy that was operating through Peter so Peter had all this zeal and because he had all this zeal but he was also emotional people with anointings people who have prophetic giftings and that type of thing often come with these emotions and these things so that they can feel and see God and they're they're sensitive and all these things and so um but also quiet creatures but um Peter was one with zeal and he was loud he was up and down he was in and out and so the enemy because he knew that he and he was also the first on the mount he was one of the three that was on the mount with him when Jesus revealed his glory and he tried to build some stuff here was Peter again trying to do stuff and getting ahead of God and the enemy was after Peter because of his anointing, because of his gift. He tried to discredit Peter. He tried to make Peter feel like he was not worthy to to the of the call because he had failed Jesus. Even though Jesus restored him, he did all of these things. But then here comes Peter back in his life after Jesus has gone on to glory. Peter was able to say in 1 Peter 5.10 to the people that he was writing to, but may the God of all grace who called us by his eternal glory called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. It is a time where God is going to settle you and bring you stability and strengthen you, establish, strengthen, and settle. Those are things that means that he is bringing you into a stable season. And so Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried away in the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, say la. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her at the break of dawn. The nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is within us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come and behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And so God is saying that he is with you. Though everything is being shaken up, there's going to be a stability, inner stability and inner strength that he's establishing you in your calling, in, in the call of God, in the word of God, whatever that is. Our calling look different. We're first of all called to a relationship with him, a new identity in Christ, to do good works, but also to live an abundant life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, Jesus said, he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So he is going to establish you in a place where you can experience the abundance that he has for you, the abundant life that he has for you. And so this last scripture here is Joshua. And this is what I prophesy to you. You have been going around the mountain long enough. That's out of Deuteronomy. He said, you have been going around this mountain long enough. This is when the Lord was about to take them into the promised land and he was preparing them and he gave them all these rules and he spoke to them, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And when you get in your promised land, do not forget me. And he began to speak to them and build them up because they had missed it 40 years ago, but he was doing it again. And he says, yes, I will do it again for you. I'm going to bring you back around and you are going to enter into it and though everything that I just read out of Psalm 46 that the earth is going to shake and all these things are going to happen and it's happening now that I'm in the midst of you God is in the midst of you God is within you and you will not fail this time the moods and the emotions and the attacks that come against you that try to break you that cause you to lose focus that distracted you that caused you to think that you were not called or you were not qualified for your call or you didn't deserve it or that you had lost it are not going 
going to um, distract you, are not going to destroy you, are not going to delay you. You will not be denied, but you have to walk in humility and follow God in this season because it's his plan and not your plan. So where you had um, felt like you failed God and you were not worthy before and those things distracted you and even the attacks of the enemy on your family, on your finances, on your health, on different things. If you make it into today, if you're here today, people are leaving the earth realm. The people, generals are being called home, but yet also the people of the world are being called to wherever they go. You know, some of them served the Lord and some of them didn't. I'm just preaching the word. They are passing away. And so we, if God has you here, he has an assignment and he says, yes, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to cause you to to prosper this time. I'm going to establish you. That's what Peter said. Um, the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After that, you have suffered a while. Who has suffered a while? He will perfect you. That means mature you, bring you to completion, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you in your wealthy place. My God, today, Joshua 1, verse 1 through 9. I don't know if I'll read it all. I probably will come to think of it. Joshua 1, verse 1 through 9 says, And that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the the wilderness on the Le and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. That's the word that the Lord gave me when my I began to transition in 2020 um, out of Isaiah 41 and 10. Glory to God. Be strong and of good courage. For this, for to this people you shall divide the divide as an inheritance the land. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from out your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I declare over you good success. Mm. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for I, the Lord, your God, am with you wherever you go. And so I release that over you, that God is with you, that um, that you have circled the mountain long enough that your Moses is dead or whatever that was holding you, whatever you have served in, whatever you have done, whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know what it was, but that season is over and it's a new season that God is bringing you into and he wants to give your inheritance and um if you focus on him and stay under his guidance and his care and humble yourself and not get ahead of him then he's going to bring you into the land that he has for you the plan that he has for you whether it be land or whatever it is he has a plan for you and he's going to bring you into it take the next step so i speak to you and i say whatever that next step is walk into your season walk into your new beginning take the next step he has a hope and a future for you and this next step is going to lead to the next step and the next step and even when you enter into the promised land it's not over and it doesn't mean that you're not going to face battles and things as we saw but from Psalm 63 some 46 we know that God is going to be with you and you will not fail. As we know from Joshua, he's going to be with you even in the midst of the battle. That doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. It's going to be that mean that you're going to be strengthened, that you have the strength, that you have, that you are established, that you are a strength. 
and that you are perfected in your faith, that you are settled in your faith. And so this is what God wants to do for you in this season so that this time around when the enemy comes to sift you, it's not going to work. I declare that over you, that you're going to finish the thing that God has spoken to you to do in the last season. You're going to finish what you started. It may look different. It may have a new assignment name on it, but the gift and the calling of God remains the same. And he is going to cause you to do his will and to do his work in a new season, in a new way. And even some people are going to go back and finish exactly what they started on prayer this morning. Someone uh, released that she was going back to finish the degree for her RN that she had started years ago, that she had already um uh, uh, enrolled in school to finish her degree that she never started, but God had spoken to her. So the word resonated with her. So let me know if it has spoken to you and what God is calling you to do in this season. Is it something that you're going back to finish or is it something new that he is calling you to do? Whatever it is, um, he's still calling you. The last time he called you to do something, whether it's the same thing or not, um, uh, in this season, the fear and the things that kept you from going forth are not going to hold you this time. He's going to settle you. I speak stability over your spirit, over your life, that you're not going to faint as your days are, so shall your strength be. You're not going to faint in your day of adversity, but you're going to break through. You're going to press through and you're going to break through and you're going to make it into your new season. You shall enter your wealthy place in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you.